Stephanie, what is Hi, your question? Matt. Hi. Um, how do you respond to self-doubt as a woman in business? And then uh, I have a second question of who are some of the most influential people who have ex inspired you to achieve success in your life? Can I ask, are you in business? Yes, I am. And what's the business? Um, I'm in the leadership development business. That's awesome. That's a really great yes. thing to be in. Thank you. So then, uh, so, so then I would say it's even a little bit different. So if I was in business empowering other leaders, then what I would do when I'm feeling doubtful or unsure is I would empower myself with knowledge. So anytime that I'm feeling anxious or unsure about what it is that I'm trying to do, I just get all, like I read all the books, I listen to all the podcasts, I watch the YouTube videos, I get all of those things together, and then I make sure that I do something daily, I make sure that I have a habit that makes me feel physically strong, makes me feel physically empowered. My word this year is warrior, like I do something every day that makes me feel physically strong because as a leader of other leaders, that is a massive amount of pressure on you to make sure that you're showing up for them, that you're showing them how to be strong. So I would arm myself with those things. Don't, don't even allow the doubt to creep into your mind because you're so busy filling your mind with the good stuff that the bad stuff can't show up. And then um, I feel like I have been super blessed in my life to be mentored by some of the greatest people in the world who don't know I exist. <laughs> so Oprah Winfrey, Tony Robbins, Dave Ramsey, these people that they produce work, John Maxwell, they wrote books and they did things and I could go to my local library and I could get their wisdom for free. So I am obsessed with the idea of being self-taught. I'm obsessed with the idea that anything that any of y'all want to know how to do right now, be a good mama, scale your business, run a marathon, everything, the answers exist right now on the internet for free. And in an age where you can get this much information for free, you not knowing something is a choice. Your ignorance about something is a choice. So empower yourself with knowledge. Go get some of the greatest mentors that exist right now. They're at your local library. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Stephanie. Where is Hadley? Hadley. Hi, Hadley. What's Hi. your question? I'm an entrepreneur, and I have an online clothing business, and I get very frustrated and often can feel defeated, and I'm a huge fan of yours. And so my question is, other than working out and listening to gangster rap, yes. how do you get through that? Like, what do you do to stay motivated? Okay, so here's my question, Hadley. Is it, why are you feeling discouraged? Like, what's happening that's making you feel that way? Um, it's just being in an online space. I find it hard to, you know, stay competitive and, and a lot of people sell clothes, so it's just staying relevant. I, I know you already. <laughs> I have your number. So it sounds to me like you're doing the comparison game. Sometimes. Is that that's what's frustrating Sometimes, you? for sure. Yeah, so especially when we're in businesses, I think a lot of us women do this. We say that we're going to go do research. We're going to go do research, and we scroll Instagram for two hours. And when I'm going out to do that kind of research, I never come back feeling empowered. I never feel strong. I always feel like crap, and I always feel like my hair is ugly. So, <laughs> pay a beautiful hair. I mean, I yeah. pay a lot of money for these extensions. They right. better look right. good, okay? So, so one thing I would say is pay attention to what is triggering you. <clears throat> pay attention to what triggers you. When do you feel like that? When are you feeling discouraged? And pay attention to what makes you feel strong. Right. I talk about rap or Beyonce because they make me feel strong. Right. And I do them all the time and it seems silly, but you're gonna have your own things. Maybe right. it's playing with your kids, maybe it's going for a run, mm -hmm. maybe it's you know watching your favorite show, whatever that looks like to you that make you feel like you can take on the world. Right. But checking out what her Instagram looks like or checking out how that business is doing compared to you, that mm -hmm. doesn't serve you. Right. And we also need to remember y'all, stop comparing your beginning with her middle. Sure. This, what you see right now. <laughs> like, what you see right now, people see my career and they're like, oh my gosh. I'm like, this right. is 15 years. 15 years of work. Right now, because of the new book, press is always like, oh, what does it feel like to be an overnight success? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. No. <laughs> I've been showing up for this, and half the battle is you just showing up again and again and again. Yeah. So, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hasley, very much. We have another audience question. Where is Misha? 
Hi, Misha. Hello. Yes, hi, Rachel. Hi. My question is, as you've gained more success, how have your personal challenges changed and how have you coped with them? You know, I think back when I was a little baby entrepreneur, I thought that if you got to a certain level that it meant everything got easier, and I work harder today than I ever have in my life. I just, you know, fly in better seats on the airplane. Um, you know, there's this, this saying, Grandma used to say, new levels, new devils. Um, mm. so, uh -huh. You know, so every time you get to a new level, there's going to be new challenges and things, and that's part of growing is just you embrace it and you know that it's going to happen. Um, one of my mentors told me a leader never has two good days in a row. A leader never has two good days in a row. That you just sort of anticipate that if you are a leader of people, if you're building something, today might be bad, tomorrow's going to be better. Today might be great, tomorrow you know, the world's going to break down, the, the, the website's going to break, something's going to go wrong. And just learning how to navigate that with grace. And honestly, I think if you're doing anything with customers or clients, people are very forgiving if you're honest about it. I mean, we had a, a horrible thing happen to us at Christmas time where we had journals go out. I don't know if any of you are still waiting for a journal, but <laughs> they didn't get shipped and people didn't get Christmas presents and we were up at two o'clock in the morning crying and we literally called everyone we knew. We, we got on the phone tree, we called people at church. We said, we need you to come and help us do customer service. 6,000 emails. Every mom in town came, brought, uh, literally brought a lawn chair, had her laptop, and helped us answer emails. People are so the community. Yes, came there's together. such incredible yeah. community. When you are honest and graceful with what you're going through, people will give that grace right back. Absolutely. Thank you, Misha. Right. All right. Where's Miss Jennifer? Jennifer. Jennifer. Hello. My question is, when dealing with anxiety, what are some of the things that never let you down, you can always count on to help you get through the anxious times? Sure. So um, the biggest lesson I've learned about anxiety is that you treat anxiety before you're anxious. You have to be crazy about making sure that you're setting up habits that you do every single day to ensure that you don't get to that place. For me, um, battling anxiety is about playing on offense instead of defense. Because if I start to have an anxiety attack, we're already too late. Mm -hmm. So it's paying attention to what you eat, paying attention to how much caffeine you consume, paying attention to what your triggers are, what sets you off, and finding ways to cope. Doing physical activity every day, people are like, man, that girl really loves the gym. I don't. I'm in a crazy season of my life, and I could very easily go to an anxious place if I don't do something physically to literally kind of exhaust my mind. Um, and then therapy. I'm a huge, massive fan of therapy. It's one of the greatest gifts in my life. You know, talk to your doctor and find someone, talk to someone in your church. But the best part about a therapist is that they're like, they don't know your husband. And so they don't care if you say that he's awful. Is that your husband next to you? It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, therapy has been a massive help for me. But really paying attention to those things, like tracking it, keeping a, keep a journal all month long and pay attention to when you start to feel anxious. And I, I'm constantly asking that question, what set me off, what set me off? And so next time I can navigate around that in advance. Right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. And of course, thank you to Rachel Hollis, guys. <laughs> and thank you to our audience for having great questions. Be sure to pick up a copy of Rachel's new book, Girl, Stop Apologizing. Available everywhere now. And